Hey guys, um, <clears throat> today we're going to cover section 2.5 on the chain rule. Um, so you will need your notes printed, um, same as what we um, would do if we were in the classroom. Um, we're going to walk through the notes, talk about the definitions, work through the examples, um, and all of that. Um, and then if you have questions, please feel free um, to message me um, in Canvas or to reach out to me so that we can get um, those questions answered. So, as we move into the chain rule and then after that we'll move into implicit differentiation in the next section, um, you're going to see that, you know, the things that we've already learned, the power rule, the product rule, the quotient rule, those are still going to come into play. So, um, keep that in mind. Um, you know, and you'll see how we use those and how those are kind of integrated um, into these other rules as well. So you can see the chain rule here, um, and it says if G is differentiable at X and F is differentiable at G of X, then the composite function F equals F of G defined by F of X equals F of G of X um, is differentiable at X, um, and F prime is given by the product. Um, f prime of x equals f prime of g of x times g prime of x. So, in other words, it is a composite function, which means you have one function inside of another function. Um, and so, just like we did with the other um, rules where I wrote that out in words, um, we're going to do that the same um, with this as well. And as we work through these examples, we'll kind of talk about that. So, for the chain rule, I say, the derivative of the outside, leave the inside as is times the derivative of the inside, okay? So essentially what we have written here in words is essentially what this is right here, okay? So assuming that this is, or it, and it is, a composite function, then f is your outside, okay? So take the derivative of your out, excuse me, outside function, and then um, leave your inside, which is your g of x the same, and then times the derivative of the inside. And then of course you would simplify that um, in any way that you can, and as we work through these examples, we'll talk about that um, and kind of what WebAssign ex expects and that sort of thing. All right, so I'm going to move this up. I'm going to leave that in case you're still trying to get that written. Um, and so let's look at example one. So we have find f prime of x if f of x equals the square root of x squared plus 1. Um, so we obviously don't want to do definition of derivative. You could do that, um, but we know that that's yucky. Um, so remember that anytime we can rewrite these functions to use any of the rules that we've already learned and the new rules that we're learning in these sections, then you want to do that. So we know that the square root of x squared plus 1 can be rewritten as x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. Okay? f of x equals x squared plus 1 to the 1 half. So power over root. So now you are going to take, do the chain rule and take the derivative of this, okay? So just so that you understand what I mean by outside and inside, I want us to look at this. So I'm calling f of x is x to the 1 half, and g of x is x squared plus 1. So remember, a composite function f of g of x means I'm taking g of x and I'm plugging it into f of x, okay? And if I plug x squared plus 1 into x to the 1 half, then that is what this function is right here, okay? So when I say outside, I'm taking the derivative of x to the 1 half. I'm leaving the inside the same, and then I'm multiplying that times the derivative of the inside, which again is your g of x, x squared plus 1. So this is what that looks like. f prime of x. If I'm taking the derivative of the outside, which again is x to the 1 half, then I'm going to bring that 1 half out in front. So that's going to be 1 half. And in parentheses, we're going to leave that junk the same, right? So that's going to be x squared plus 1. And remember, if you're taking the derivative, you say 1 half x, and then you subtract 1. So we're saying 1 half minus 1, which gives us negative 1 half 
times the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of x squared plus 1 is going to be 2x. So at this point, we've taken the derivative using the chain rule. The only thing we're going to do at this point moving forward is just to simplify and make that pretty. So if we multiply 1 half times 2x, then 1 half times 2 is just going to be 1. So we're just going to be left with x times x squared plus 1 oh, sorry, to the negative 1 half. And then based on what we learned um, in the previous sections, um, then we are just going to move. You could leave it, um, but we usually pre that up a little bit by moving that x squared plus 1 to the negative 1 half to the bottom, making that positive, right? So now we have x over x squared plus 1 to the positive 1 half, right? And then if we pretty that up even more, then we can rewrite so that our one half is back into a square root like it originally started. And that would be x over the square root of x squared plus one. And this would be your final answer that you would put in to WebAssign, okay? That would be your final answer. All right, so let's look at um, example two. All right, so in example two, um, we have two parts, part A and part B, um, and so they want you to differentiate y equals sine of x squared, and they want you to differentiate y equals sine squared x. And so here you've got, they look very similar, but our f of x's and our g of x's are different um, in these two problems. And so what is your outside and what is your inside? Um, is different. So let's look at that and see how we would work those. Alright, so part A again is y equals sine of x squared. So that means your outside is sine and your inside is x squared. So using our chain rule, if we take the derivative of the outside, the derivative of sine, which we learned um, in the last section, 2, 4, uh, before our last test, then that would be cosine. Again, leave your inside the same. And then times the derivative of the inside. And so the derivative of x squared is 2x. So there's not really a lot that we can do here to simplify this, but we do usually um, bring any numbers or variables that we have out in front of the trig function so that it's not confused as being inside of the parentheses like the x squared is. So it's not cosine of all of that. It's times that. So this would be 2x cosine of x squared. And that would be your final answer. Okay? So that's part A. So now let's put, look at part B and see how um, that looks a little different. Okay? So we can rewrite this. And this is the same as y equals sine x squared, okay? And I'm rewriting it because if you rewrite it in this way, it makes it a lot easier to see what your inside and your outside is and how that is different from part A. So in part A, sine was our outside and x squared was our inside. But now if we have sine x squared, then again, keeping in mind what we talked about a while ago, that this is a composite function and we plugged one function inside of another function, then your f of x is x squared and your g of x is sine x and we plugged that in to x squared to get sine x squared. So your outside is just x squared and your inside is sine x. So if we took the derivative of x squared, that would just be 2x, right? But in this case, we have sine x, so that's going to be Two sine x, and then if we subtract one, that would just be to the one power, so we don't have to write that. And then do the derivative of the inside, and the derivative of sine x is cosine x. So again, similar to part A, really not a lot to simplify here, so it'll just be two sine x cosine x. 
2 sine x cosine x. And that is it for part B. And for example 2. Alright, so let's flip it over and move to example 3. Know that for some of you, I may, may be moving a little fast on the writing. That's the beauty of a video. Um, I'm sure you wish sometimes you could pause me in class, um, but now you really can pause me. Um, and so, and take the time to, to look at that problem again or listen to what I said again, rewind, um, that sort of thing. Um, so if I'm moving a little fast, just, just pause that and, and catch up as you need to. All right, so example three. Um, we are taking the derivative of y equals x cubed minus 1 to the 100th power, okay? So, if we are taking the derivative of this, right, then that means that our 100 is going to come out in front. We're going to leave our inside the same, which is x cubed minus 1. And if we subtract 1 from 100, that is going to be 99 times the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of x cubed minus 1 is going to be 3x squared. And then you would just simplify so we can combine this 100 times this 3x squared. And that gives you 300x squared times x cubed minus 1 to the 99th power. Right, and that would be um, the simplest that you could go on this. And so we are going to leave it there. Okay, so not too bad on that one. Alright, so let's move on and look at example 4. So for example 4, we're doing the same thing. Okay, and this time we have 1 over the cube root of x squared plus one, uh, sorry, the cube root of x squared plus x plus 1. So again, you could do the quotient rule on this, but if you did the quotient rule, you would still have to do the chain rule within that. So remember we talked about, again, anytime you can rewrite things, using a fractional exponent, move it to the top, any of that jazz to make your life easier, um, then you definitely want to do that. Okay, so let's work on rewriting this first um, before we take the derivative. Alright, so this would be the same as 1 over x squared plus x plus 1 all to the 1 third power, right? Because we've got power, all of that is understood to be the first power, and your root is 3, okay? Now, if we move that to the top so that we can just do the chain rule and not have to do the quotient and the ch chain, and then there's also the power rule in there as well, then we can move that to the top and make this x squared plus x plus 1 to the negative 1 third. To the negative 1 third. Alright, so now that we've rewritten that, we can take the derivative just like we've been doing. Now you obviously have some negative exponents to take into consideration, um, but that is not going to change how we work this problem. Okay, so the outside, all that's the inside, so this is essentially like having x to the negative one-third, right? So you would just bring that negative one-third out in front. You would leave your inside the same. And then remember, you would subtract one. So we've got negative one-third minus one, which is essentially minus three over three. So that's going to give you negative four-thirds times the derivative of the inside and the derivative of x squared plus x plus 1 is going to be 2x plus 1. Okay, again simplify, pretty this up in any way um, that you can. For this, for the most part, WebAssign will still let you um, put in your negative exponents. Um, you could move it back to the bottom. You could write it with a power and a root um, to the fourth power, Q 
cube root to the fourth power, you could do that, um, but WebAssign will take it um, as is. So the only thing I'm going to do is bring out my 2x plus 1 in the front. It's not really a deal breaker though. And this is how I would enter it in WebAssign, and WebAssign will accept it this way. Okay, but again, if you wanted to move this junk to the bottom and make it positive, and then if you also wanted to convert that back to um, a power and a root, you could definitely do that. Okay, all right, how are we on that? Hopefully, we're okay. All right, so let's look at our next page. All right, so we are on example five, and you'll see here um, that we have g of t equals t minus two over two t plus one, all to the ninth power. So we're still gonna do the chain rule, but now once we take the derivative of the inside, you'll notice that that is um, a fraction, so that means that we're going to have to do the quotient rule. So remember, I started off this section reminding you um, that you would sometimes have to, your, and we've already done that, the power rule's already been embedded into several of these, your trig function derivatives have already been embedded into these, so you've already seen that, um, but it gets just a little longer and a little yuckier sometimes with example five and example six, um, and even seven to some some degree um, when you've got quotient and the product rule all mingled in um, with your chain rule. They just get a little longer. Um, so let's look here. And so again, the, all of this is your inside and so x to the ninth power is your outside. So that would be 9. Leave all of your inside the same which would be t minus 2 over 2t plus 1, all to the 8th power. That's just the derivative of the outside, leaving the inside the same, okay? Times the derivative of the inside. Now, when we take the derivative of the inside, we're going to have to do the quotient rule, okay? So, remember, that's low d high minus high d low all over low squared. So, we've got low 2t plus 1 times the derivative of the top, and the derivative of the top is just going to be 1 minus low d high minus high d low, and the derivative of the bottom is just going to be 2 all over the bottom squared. Okay? So obviously on the top, you're going to have to um, simplify that and make that a little prettier. So we're going to leave all of this junk the same for right now. Just bring that over. This, if you multiply 1 times all of that, you're still just going to get 2t plus 1. And if I multiply my negative and my 2 through this parentheses at the same time, then that gives me negative. 2t plus 4 all over 2t plus 1 squared. Okay, we notice that our 2t's cancel. We're never upset about anything canceling. Right, and then your 1 plus your 4 would be 5. So now we have 9. Bring all this junk down. I did was add my 1 and my 4 and get 5. Okay? Now, you'll notice that on the bottom we've got 2t plus 1 and we also have 2t plus 1. So this whole thing is to the 8th power and this is squared. So that means this in the top is to the 8th power and this in the bottom is also to the 8th power. So we could do some combining that uh, or some combining on the bottom because if this is to the 8th and this is squared, then we have a total of 10 of those, right? So we could just um, simplify that and make that a little prettier. So that's what we're gonna do. Nine times five is 45. 
Again, t minus 2 is to the 8th power. And 2t plus 1 is also to the 8th power. And 2t plus 1 is squared. So that gives us a total of 10 2t's plus 1. So our final answer would be 45 t minus 2 to the 8th all over 2t plus 1 to the 10th. Now, if you were working this for the first time by yourself, I may not, you know, you probably wouldn't recognize, oh, I could combine those. Um, but the example that you're going to have um, in your homework um, and that you may possibly see on your test is going to be similar. Um, so now that you have seen that, you can recognize that that is what you would need to do. Okay? So that is example five using the chain rule and um, the product rule. I mean, sorry, the chain rule and the quotient rule. Yes. On example six, we are going to do the chain rule and the product rule. Okay. So this is your first, right? And this is your second. Because remember when we're doing the products rule, we say first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Okay? Um, so that's your first term, your second term. So you're going to be doing products rule. But when you take the derivative of the first, you're going to have to do chain. And when you take the derivative of the second, you're going to have to do chain. Okay? So this one's going to get a little long. Um, and then at the end, we're going to have to factor some stuff out. Um, and your one on your homework will be very similar to this. So you want to make sure that you pay attention to this example and use this example um, as you work through that one, um, the example that is similar to this in your homework. Okay. All right. So here we go. The first as is, which is 2x plus 1 to the fifth power times the derivative of the second. And the derivative of the second is going to require us to do the chain rule. So that is going to be 4. Leave your inside the same. And that goes to the third power times the derivative of the inside, which is going to be 3x squared minus 1. Okay? Now all of this is first term times the derivative of the second. And all of this is the derivative of the second. Okay? Plus the second as is times the derivative of the first, which is going to be 5. Leave your inside the same. 2x plus 1 to the 4. So minus 1 on your power times the derivative of the inside, which is just going to be 2. So all of this is the second part of the product rule. So again, this is first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. Okay? So now at this point, we're doing a whole lot of simplifying and making stuff pretty, okay? So you'll notice here on your numbers, because that's all of the calculus part, everything from this point forward. Um, if y'all are all here with me in class, you would say in unison is algebra. So, and that's exactly what it is. So from this point forward, it is algebra. So you'll notice that you have a four here and five times two is 10. Um, so what you have in common um, between both of those, um, if you were pulling out a common factor, that would be two. So we're gonna pull out 2 as our common factor. And then we have 2x plus 1 to the 5th here. And we have 2x plus 1 to the 4th here. So the most that we can pull out is 2x plus 1 to the 4th. Okay. Then we have x cubed minus x plus 1 to the 3rd. And we have x cubed minus x plus 1 to the 4th. So if there's 3 here and 4 here, the most we can pull out is 3. Alright, there's nothing else in common between all of this and this. 
So we're gonna, that's the all that we're gonna leave on the outside. So now we're essentially factoring this out of all of this and seeing what's left on the inside and then we'll reduce that, okay? So four divided by two is going to be two. If I have five two x plus ones and I pull four out, then I'm gonna have one left. If I had three x cubed minus x plus one and three of those and I pull three out, I'm not gonna have any left. And then I need to bring down my three x squared minus one. All right, I've got five times two, which is 10. So if I pull out a two, then I have a five left. If I have two x plus one to the four, then I pull four out, I don't have any left. And if I have x cubed minus x plus one to the four, then I pull three out, then I have one of those left, okay? So now we have factored this out, and this is what is left. Okay, so we're gonna leave this junk alone and we're gonna focus on just simplifying what is on the inside of the brackets. Okay, so bring all of this down. So we're gonna fold this out and then we'll go back and multiply that by two. So this is gonna be what? Uh, 6x cubed minus 2x, 1 times 3x squared is going to be plus 3x squared, and 1 times negative 1 is going to be minus 1. Then we're going to distribute this 5, and so we're going to get 5x cubed minus 5x plus 5. Okay? Now, we still need to distribute this 2 through this parentheses, and then we also need to combine like terms after we do that. So again, I'm bringing all of this down, not changing anything to that. All right, and so 2 times 6x cubed is going to be 12x cubed. 2 times negative 2x is going to be negative 4x. 2 times 3x squared is going to be 6x squared. And 2 times negative 1 is going to be negative 2. Bring down your plus 5x cubed minus 5x plus 5. Are we having fun yet? Alright, so now combine your like terms. So you've got 12x cubed and 5x cubed, negative 4x and 5x, and then you've got your negative 2 and your 5, right? So again, one last time, bring all of this down, 2 times 2x plus 1 to the 4 times x cubed minus x plus 1 to the 3rd. If I say 12x cubed, times, sorry, not times, plus 5x cubed, and that gives me 17x cubed. We only have 1x squared term, so we're going to bring that down. Negative 4x minus 5x is going to be negative 9x, and negative 2 plus 5 is going to be 3. Okay, so this is the most simplified answer, even though that looks like a lot. Okay, that is the most simplified answer, and that is what you would enter into WebAssign. Again, the problem on WebAssign is going to be very similar to this, um, and so you'll definitely want to make sure that you're following this example when you're doing that. Okay? All right. Let's look at example seven, and this will be the final example for this section. And so what we have here is we have um, the chain rule within the chain rule and also trig functions. So 
um, if you didn't learn your derivatives of your trig functions in 2, 4, um, you definitely want to do that at this point, okay? So you've got the outside, and all of this is the inside, but then you've also got outside, and this is your inside. So that's why I said it's chain within the chain. Um, you'll have to do that um, essentially twice, okay? So the derivative of the outside, the derivative of sine is going to be cosine. And then we're going to leave all of this the same, cosine of tan x. None of that's going to change times the derivative of the inside, okay? But again, when we take the derivative of the inside, that's going to require us to do the chain rule again. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Leave your tan x the same. And the derivative of the inside, which is tan x, is going to be secant squared x, okay? So that looks really yucky, um, and honestly, it doesn't really simplify to look any prettier than it does right now, except for the fact that we are going to take this negative, because if all of this is multiplied times each other, and this is positive, this is negative, and this is positive, the whole shebang will be negative. So really, all we're going to do is bring that negative out in front of everything, and then we are just going to bring all of this down. So when you enter this in WebAssign, you're definitely going to want to be mindful of parentheses, uh, making sure that, for instance, here you close and close, 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 um, and that sort of thing. Okay? But that is your final answer, and that is how you would type it in to WebAssign. So although it looks gross, um, it really wasn't as long and as bad as some of the other ones um, in this section. So that is all of section 2.5 on the chain rule. Um, and so again, um, take your time, pause as needed, um, and let me know if you have any questions. Um, and I will see you in the next video on section 2.6.